skin cancer and sun safety, et cetera, is Mark Wishner, the president of Sun Safety, and he's actually we've got actually five things to give away with him, and then two more coming up with our last one after that. So uh, stick around with some goodies. Thanks, Bill. Hi, everybody. Uh, as Bill mentioned, my name is Mark Wishner. I'm the founder of the Sun Safety program. Uh, I really started Sun Safety based upon my own experience with skin cancer, along with my love of the game of golf. And um, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about our organization, some of the work that we do, talk to you about sun protection and uh, some techniques and tips on sun protection, and then uh, have a little call for action at the end. Uh, but before I get started, one thing I really want to do from our own experience, and certainly today has reinforced it, I uh, really like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the section and the staff of the section for putting this event together and supporting our messaging as well as getting education out to you folks. So maybe we could ask for a round of applause for the, the staff. The you know, when we started Sun Safety, we came to the section and um, it was really encouraging because we sat down with Tom Mattis and he said, you know, Mark, this is great. We got to do it. We got to get on board and whatever we can do to help. And it's really been a great partnership. Um, before I get started, I always ask a question at the beginning of any presentation, and maybe you guys can help me out. By a show of hands, who here has either had skin cancer or precancerous lesions or knows somebody who has? So maybe you can just keep them up for a second, look around the area. It's about a 90, 95% affirmative response. Let me put your hands down, thank you. Um, and that's very typical. In the golf industry, um, skin cancer is even more prevalent than it is in the general public. In the general public, one out of five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime. Two million skin cancers are diagnosed every year. And here's one for you. There's a lot, this October, there's a lot of attention put towards breast cancer, which is important and very worthy. But every year, more skin cancers are diagnosed than lung cancer, prostate cancer, and breast cancer combined. So the goal of the Sun Safety Program is to deliver a consistent, informative, and branded message of sun protection from the time somebody enters the game of golf as a child, through high school, into college, and beyond. Because much of the sun exposure we get as a child is what causes problems as an adult. Um, we can keep making a cumulative effect on that sun protection as an adult, but that base uh, exposure we get as a kid is what really causes or is the template for the, uh, for the future. We've been very fortunate. We've had um, some really great partnerships, as I mentioned. We're the National Sun Protection Content Provider for the First Tee, the AJGA, the Golf Course Superintendents Association, the National Golf Course Owners Association, and a multitude of regional and local uh, associate, golf associations and junior golf associations. Um, earlier today, we were distributing these uh, sun safety kits. Um, if you didn't get one, we'll be over at the table and be able to distribute them to you later on. But they talk about sunscreen and what to look for in a sunscreen. We recommend a sunscreen of an SPF of 30. Um, anything more than that, quite honestly, is a waste of money. An SPF of 30 blocks 97% of the UVB rays. So you're really getting a marginal increase if you buy anything more than that. And actually starting next year, the FDA is going to limit 50 as the maximum that a company can market their sunscreen at. But it's very important, sun SPF only refers to the UVB rays, so you want to make sure you have a sunscreen that says it has broad spectrum coverage or protects against UVA and UVB rays. The one point that I really emphasize because it's amazing how often I hear from people that they didn't know it is that most sunscreens only last two to three hours. So that's why a sun, they're a sponge basically, they absorb the UV rays and they become saturated or you sweat and they come off. So at Sun Safety, we say don't burn, reapply at the turn. Or if you're out on the practice range, every time you take a break, go in, reapply your, your sunscreen. Uh, another little secret about uh, sun protection is when you ask somebody how they protect themselves in the sun, more often than not, they talk about sunscreen. Clothing is your best protection in the sun. You don't have to worry about when you apply it, when you reapply it. Um, and there's a new generation of fabrics called uh, technical textile. They have a UPF rating, just like sunscreen has an SPF rating. UPF will tell you how well that garment will protect you in the sun. Highly recommend if you're a golf professional that you wear clothing that has a UPF rating, or if it doesn't, dark fabrics with a tight weave are your best protection. We also talk about shade. 
You talk about shade out on the golf course, but on the practice facility, it's really great to have shade out there, not only for you, but for your students. Because you're going to be out there for eight hours a day teaching. It's nice to have a, a shady spot that not only can you uh, you stand under, but when you go over your videos, as uh, John and Paul were talking about earlier, they can actually see it better. So why not have some shade out, out on the, the course? And we also heard somebody talking earlier today about hydration. That's a real important aspect of sun protection. Um, we've all missed a putt on 18 or 17. And we know we would have made that on number 10. But um, you know, maybe we're a little dehydrated, maybe we're a little bit overexposed to the sun. Um, as far as my uh, call to action, um, we've had some great endorsements from golf professionals. Mr. Arnold Palmer has given Sun Safety a testimonial and endorsement. David Ledbetter. Uh, if you go to our website, we have videos from Hunter Mahan, Scott McCarron, Johnson Wagner. We have instructional videos. As golfers, we're hesitant to use sunscreen sometimes because we're afraid it's going to get on our hands and affect our grip. Hey, we've got a video on our website that shows you how to put sunscreen on in a golf-friendly way so it doesn't get on your hands and doesn't affect your grip. You now there's no excuse not to use sunscreen. But uh, as I mentioned, we've had some great endorsements, and um, Jim Hardy uh, gave us a real nice testimonial. And one of the things Jim said was that for too long, the golf industry has avoided this issue of sun protection. And he feels that it's incumbent on the industry to teach the next generation of golfers how to protect themselves in the sun. So that's what I ask of you is teach the next generation. Be an example for your students. Wear a hat, ideally a wide brim hat. Wear sunglasses, use sunscreen, wear sun protective clothing, have shade in your teaching area, and show your students that you're walking the walk and that they should do it as well. My final call to action is we're a nonprofit organization. We're a charity. We don't sell anything. We're supported by individual donations and sponsorships. If you think it's a worthwhile message, please pass it along to your acquaintances, students, um, corporate executives that you may know that would help us out and support the industry. If you know a company that might want to be a sponsor, please let them know about us. Feel free to have them contact me. We would welcome your support. So anything else, I've opened up to any questions that you may have, or we can do the, uh, the raffle bills ready here to, to go. Um, Spray-ons to me are the, uh, the low end of the spectrum. While they are most convenient, the problem with them is that they're chock full of chemicals, and you run the risk of inhaling those, and that can cause problems. But here's the crazy thing about it. Banana Boat just recently took their spray sunscreen off the market. Why did they take it off the market? Well, first, it's, it has a lot of alcohol and it has petroleum products in it. Some guy put his Banana Boat sunscreen on, sprayed it on, and then went and lit his barbecue. Oh, my and God. he lit himself on fire. So they no longer are marketing their product. The other thing with the spray, aside from that, is not a barbecue out on the practice range or on the golf course is you don't really know where it's going. And if it's a breezy day, you miss a spot here or there, it goes off into the environment. So my answer always is, it's better than nothing, but it's not the ideal way to apply it. Cream, you always know where it's going. 